from the dead and vindicate him. It's not his innocence. It didn't say, and you know, um, uh, Jesus thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God, but humbled himself. But they took advantage of him. And they, they well, I mean, think about it. This is us now. This is our thing. And, but they took advantage of him. And they hurt him. And they did these things, you know. But God, God raised him from the dead. <laughs> Take that. By the way, all this movement hurts my neck. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but I hope you're following me. Folks, we need Christ in us. We got, we got all kind of junk going on that is not Christ. But, and we're using words and concepts to justify ugliness. When if we would just really read the scriptures and, and really see what his mind is, it's like, you know, God's, you know, God's not saying, you know, you shouldn't have died. He's saying, you self-gave. He's not saying you shouldn't have died. They're mean, and I'm going to vindicate you. I hope you see that. Can you see, anybody can see that? Do I need to just keep rep repeating, you know, I'm repeating this over and over? Because it's not, it's not what we think, you know? Yes. A retaliation. Except that add that edge mm -hmm. to it. Uh, I'm going to show you. And that's not what this, that's or not God. Or, that's what I mean, God's saying. I'm not going to show you people. Jesus is right in your mouth. Yeah, or God's going to show you. Trust me, this thing's going to work out. And everybody's going to see that I'm, you know. No. God wants to see that you're self giving, or more specifically, that it's Christ that you have the mind of Christ, that you have the nature of Christ. See, that's what it, it's not. We've said this over and over at different points, but maybe this is a time to say it again. It's not self-giving. It's Christ who is the lamb way, whatever that is. We can't, let's not put it in a box by, by using just simple words. But how are we going to explain it without words, you know? So I have to throw stuff out, but then I have to take it back and say that's not it. Boy, you, right? I mean, you have to, and you have to say, let the Holy Spirit show you what, what it is. You know, and he will. He's faithful. He's so faithful to lift up Jesus beyond anything I could ever say or bring forth. All right, so <clears throat> let's see. Boy, I know we're running out of everything here, but I just want to read that paragraph again because I think it's so important if we could only really, really get this. The act of God raising uh, Jesus from the dead is to be seen as divine vindication of what Jesus stood for in his act of self-giving on the cross. This means that in God's mind, resurrecting and exalting Christ were vindication of the cross and the way of the crucified, not just that he was right and they were wrong or that he did not deserve it. God's vindication is not of the righteous or the innocent, but of the lamb and his way. It is God's approval of the death and of the spirit in which he gave himself. Woo. The cross was characterized by the renunciation of power. Though in the form of God, he thought it not a thing to be grasped after to be equal with God. Renunciation of power and of living according to self-sacrifice for others and suffering, at a, suffering a cruel death for those for whom he died and loved. The resurrection was God's vindication of the selflessness of Christ. That this one, that they judged worthy of death, the lamb, he judged worthy of not just life by resurrection, but of ascension to lordship over all. Man. You know, I mean tit for tat. No, this is not tit for tat. This is, this is God seeing something that so honors him and so pleases him that he just exalts it above every name and every, you know, things in earth, above earth, heaven, under the earth, everything. I don't care who you are, where you are. This is it. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> 
Therefore, in a manner of speaking, you could say that it was God's vindication of his way. It's not his way, but it's his nature. But his nature is a way of life because it is a life. <clears throat> Based upon this, you, you might could say that God was not vindicating Jesus, but selflessness in Jesus. Well, that is Jesus. That's his nature. You see, you see what I'm saying? But I say it like that. See, I, I know it's sort of freaky to say stuff like that. Well, it's not Jesus. But it is Jesus. But when you say Jesus to most people, well, they go, oh, well, you know, they picture some guy in robes or some guy way up on the throne. You know, it's not like they look at the cross and go, yeah, that's, that's the one I'm, you know, I'm thinking about. It's something else. And so, you know, um, I'll read that again. Based upon this, you might could say, you probably shouldn't, <clears throat> that God was not vindicating Jesus, but selflessness in Jesus. But that selflessness is his nature. It is the pure essence of Jesus, not just some personality. All right, the resurrection was God's favorable response. <laughs> you like that? The resurrection was God's favorable response to the manner and degree of selflessness that Jesus displayed. Therefore, our task is to understand the resurrection in light of the one that was crucified. Yeah. Our task is no longer to consider the resurrection in terms of all the th things that we do, but let's do it on the basis that God resurrected. Wherefore, <clears throat> anyone who knows of Jesus knows he was crucified. He was crucified in weakness. He was rejected by religion and by the government, meaning the Romans, the Jews and the Romans. He was deemed unacceptable. He was too passive, too easily conquered. And can you see that? Okay. That, you know, I don't want, boy, there's this area I could just go into, but we just don't have enough time. Oh, perfect example, though. Why do you do this to me, Holy Spirit? <laughs> it's just there's so much of this reality, and, and yet you know the scriptures. And, and he wants to just all of a sudden break forth with things that we knew as stories or events in the Gospels and go, see, this is the demonstration of the epistles, that I, the, thing, the essence that's coming forth in the epistles. This is what that was. You go, oh, it wasn't just being Jesus, he's good because he feeds the poor. A lot of people feed the poor, and they're not even Christian. You know what I mean? So, oh, they're just, they're self-giving. Well, they may be, but they're not Christ self-giving. There might be another motive behind it to look good or feel good. Some people do stuff just to feel good. You know, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the soup kitchen, and, <laughs> you know, do stuff like that. And they do it to feel good because of all the bad stuff they've been doing. You know? <clears throat> all right. He, <clears throat> he was too passive, too easily conquered. Oh, my God. In light of m many people's teaching about the resurrection, you know, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Folks, it says right there, it says... I want to know him in the power of his resurrection being made conformable to his death. You want to know the power of resurrection? It's death. That's the scripture. It says it. You can read it. I wonder what book that's in. Philippians 3. <laughs> there is. And guess what? It's, it's long about verse 10 also. It is. Okay, so we're in verse 10 right here, and every tongue shall confess, but we're in chapter 2. But remember what I told you, that Philippians 3 is nothing more than Philippians 2 being repeated. Philippians 2 is Jesus. Philippians 3 is Paul. And him taking and carrying over all of those things. And you can match them. I'm telling you, it's like a template. Okay, Jesus thought it not Robert. Da, 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 da. Then you bring Paul over here and you can lay his thing. And he's saying the same exact thing. He just said, I believed it in chapter 2. In chapter 3, I'm going to live it. 
that's called a quick explanation of chapter three, but that's, that's basically it. <clears throat> and since, since we're short on time, that's why you get the <laughs> short version of that. <laughs> <clears throat> I cannot believe my wife didn't tell me this would be your last time. So I taught one class and I found out when you did. <laughs> I'm going, really, this is it? No, no, I wouldn't have paced myself in the first one. <clears throat> I'd be doing like I'm doing now. Okay, and then the... Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, again, he was too passive, too easily conquered. Okay, and again, this is that thing. You know, somebody says, well, okay, let's just use this example. Somebody could hear that kind of teaching. Well, you know, we're supposed to be conquerors by the cross. We're supposed to lay down our life. So somebody's going to come along and they're going to go, you know, that Randy, he's a sly dog. He's a, he's a, a cult leader, man. And all he, he's teaching everybody this passive, this, this being easily conquered thing so that they'll all do what he wants and just serve him and he can live high on the, on the hog like I do. Yeah. <laughs> If they only knew, <clears throat> um, and and rule over people and take advantage of people and you know all that. Well, I you know what? If I was outside, I could see how somebody could think that. I, I really could. I mean, but it's what Jesus taught. You know, Jesus said, you know, turn the other cheek. You know. See, there's so much right there. So much. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's not, but that's not what they call the kingdom of God. What they call the kingdom of God is now we've got power and authority over everything, and we're going to rule and we're going to reign. Yeah, but you need to look at what's ruling and reigning on the cross. I mean, on the throne. It's a lamb. It's a slain lamb, and he's wanting that in. He's wanting. He did that so that the other seeds like him would come up. But then you see, you teach that, and then it's, you know, I never heard that before, man. Everybody teaches the resurrection is that we're all glorified and everything's going to be wonderful. Well, I know they do, and, and that's fine. I don't, I don't even argue with that. I won't argue with that. My goal is to follow what the Holy Spirit is showing me in the Word, and I'm going to be faithful to it regardless of what happens. Regardless of how many people don't like it or don't like me, you can't please everybody. You can't. I'm not trying. I'm trying to please the Father by Christ. I'm going to live this way, and I'm going to teach it, and I'm going to go with those that want it. And, you know, and many of you have been beat up upon because you took this stand. We seem to be pretty happy in Jesus, though. You know what I mean? I mean we're with the Lord, and we got one another, and praise God. <laughs> so he, he was too passive, too easily conquered. He demonstrated no power to resist. He's God. They came to take him. You don't think it could have just, you know, it'd be like an atomic bomb. He's just the only one standing there. Anybody else? On another continent somewhere? <laughs> no. They took him to the slaughter. They took him to the altar. Yeah, and that, that's going to glorify God, see? This just depends on what's in their heart and what's in his heart. All right, so he demonstrated no power to resist, no power to overcome wrongdoing towards the innocent. You know, people say, well, he heals everything and everyone, and I just I always remember him walking through that crowd of people that are all, it says he walked through a crowd of lame and halt and blind and all of this, you know. And he stops at one guy and he says, you know, will you be made whole? Well, I have no man. Ah, see, there you go. Yeah. We're all dependent on someone else to lift us up and take us, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I believe in the springs of living water, but, you know, I got nobody that will get me there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get there? Yes. Bingo, get up. 
I mean, there's, you know, these are easy explanations of all this, but it's not, it's not simple, all of this. It is more of a heart thing that is connecting with Christ than it is, you know, truths about healing or whatever. They're, he is not doing this for the fun of just showing, well, you know, that's the difference between God and you people. I can do this stuff. And if you'll stick with me, I'll show you how to do it. And then we can all do it. And then, we'll, then people will really appreciate us and think we're cool. Really, is that why Jesus came when he walked the earth? Because he wanted people to appreciate him and think he's cool? They didn't think he was cool. And a lot of them still don't. And especially, here's the, here's the, here's the weird thing. A lot of them don't think that the crucified is cool. They think the resurrected one is. So they go, oh, yeah, yeah, he died so this could happen. No, he died so that what was true in him could be true in us. He divides, he sits on that throne and divides goats from sheep. And he goes, you know, he does, he's, he's not, look, you know, we always get caught up in things. And I know, you know, it talks about works and stuff. And I can, you know, I can get into all that too, but I don't want to stretch it out. But in that picture that he gives it, it's like he's just looking at the multitude. He's just looking in the multitude, and he's not going, well, you did pretty good, and hey, you were, you know, uh, thank you for, you know, praying, you know, a lot or doing this or whatever. He's looking at nature. He's just looking at nature and goes, okay, well, there's goats, and I want you guys, you over here, and, you know, you guys, you know, over here, and the ones that look like sheep. Come on. I mean, that's pretty powerful if you think about it. That he's a God of essence. He looks for essence. And if that's true, and if I embrace that as true, if I, me, if I embrace that as true, I cannot, I can no longer just pursue God on some sort of religious level. I've got to know him. I want you, Jesus. I can't live without you. Okay, well, how many Christians w would maybe say that? I was in a church service just not even a week ago, I guess. Yeah, not even a week ago, another church. And... <clears throat> And the song said something about, you know, I can't live without you. And I just looked around, and, you know, and I'm not judging. I'm just thinking, I'm just, I can do that here. <laughs> How many of you literally are a branch that cannot live without him? Because your definition of live is Christ, Christ crucified. That's your definition of living. And I cannot live what pleases the Father without him. Then it's just me, and it's, old, it's like the old covenant again. Me trying to measure up. Well, I don't want to live without him. I don't want a life that is devoid of him in essence. I don't want to follow a figurehead and a, I don't want to follow a dictator or, or a king. I want to follow the crucified. I, I want to know Jesus. If that's his, that's what I started that with. I said, if that's who he is, if that's his essence, then how can I, me, not you, I mean anyone I would think, but I can't, I can't vouch for you. How can I Continue an existence that ignores a pursuit that says, Jesus, you are my all in all. You are going to be my life more and more. You're going to manifest yourself. I'm going to know you. And to do that, guess what? You're going to have to be put in situations where people are going to want to kill you, if you understand what I mean. I mean, you know, it may just be somebody at work who doesn't like you. <laughs> And we go, well, I'm a good Christian. What's wrong with them? 
God's not looking at you and going, you know, looking at the circumstance and going, he's a good Christian. What's wrong with you people? He's going, come on, be my son. Don't just be a good Christian. Manifest Christ. Be the vehicle of the life that I gave you. I didn't put him in. I could have just left him on the throne. And he'd say, hey, turn left. Stop. Don't do that. Go, yes, that's good. You know what I mean? He could just sit up there and yell orders. But it's a lamb sitting there. He's not doesn't have a megaphone. Hey, you know? Just do what I say and you'll be lamb-like. No, you'll probably be a, you'll be a copycat. You'll be a parrot. You'll be a... Yeah. You'll be devoid of life. You're just following. You know, and that's what we do with the scriptures. Well, the scripture says, you know, you know. So I got to do with the script. I got to be scriptural. Well, Satan said, well, the scripture says that you should throw yourself down and... So, Jesus, you need to be scriptural. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we, the Pharisees knew the scriptures. We need to know Jesus. <laughs> and, and every one of us can say we know Jesus, but every one of us can also say, you know what, I need to know Jesus. And I need the, I need the Holy Spirit to open the word so that through the word he can open God's heart because he does use the word. He does use the scriptures, folks. I mean, he's the living word, so guess what? This is the written word, and the written word can never communicate fully his essence, but the Holy Spirit can take the written word and reveal his essence. So the pursuit isn't, I need, you know, oh gosh, I need to know all these deep truths that they teach here. God, help us. Please know. Please. That would be the biggest failure of this place that we would ever do. But if... You know, someone said to me recently, they said it to me at the conference, and they said, you know, and they'd known me for a lot of years, and they came here, and they went to Bible school, and graduated, and they're off serving God. And they said to me, the person said to me, thank you for pointing me to Jesus. And I thought, I'm so blessed because I didn't teach him anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not, yes, I'm the teacher that taught this one. Or something. I didn't teach anybody anything. When the heart turns to the Lord, the veil is rent. I can't take any glory for any of that. <clears throat> but John the Baptist, he said, they said, who are you? Who are you? Are you this? No, I ain't that, because it was some glorified thing. Well, are you that? No. Then who are you? I'm the voice of one. I speak of one. I point to one. I'm, I'm not him, but I'm pointing to him. I'm declaring him. Well, what about you? That, and that's really what they say. What about you? Look, I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy. Let me just leave it right there. I'm not even worthy. To be a, 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 a stake in the ground, a, a stump that has a sign on it that just points to Christ. Just don't look at me. I'm not it. But he, yes, he does live in me. But you can't know the Jesus that lives in me. I mean, you can, but you would only know the Jesus. You'd only know Jesus. And then you'd go, oh, you know what? I think he lives in him, too, because I see the stuff from the Lord that I'm knowing happening in him. John said, and I'll end with this because it's getting late, but John said, I write these things unto you that you might have fellowship with us. I 
who, that's why I'm writing to you, that you might have fellowship with them. But then he clarifies, well, let's be clear here. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And so the Father and the Son, excuse me, the Father and the Son have this fellowship. of oneness. It's not a mental fellowship. It's a fellowship of oneness of kind. They have it. Truly, you know, I write this that we would have felt, but truly, now let's get to the truth of it. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. So we have fellowship as long as we are knowing the Lord in, in reality. In other words, each person is knowing Him then we truly have, we have fellowship, but truly the fellowship that we're really having is, is the fellowship that the Father has with the Son and the Son has with the Father. Let's see, let me see where I'm at. I think I'm... Well, I'll read this and just end with it, and that is, I, I, I'm just going to read up to the last sentence here because it's, it is important. He was deemed unacceptable. Okay, that's this, this lamb that won't fight for the right to, you know, don't you know who I am? He was too passive, too easily conquered. He demonstrated no power to resist, no power to overcome wrongdoing towards the innocent. The resurrection must be seen in relation to this Jesus. There was a lot of injustice in the world then, just like there is now. Jesus didn't come. I mean, the Son of God came. He didn't come and end all. He didn't stop world hunger. What's up with that? I mean, you know, I mean, what's up with that? He didn't, you know, he didn't heal everybody immediately and, and have the best health care, da-da-da-da, you know what I mean? I mean, he didn't fix the, you know. The world health crisis. Come on, well, your son of God came. It looked like he didn't fix anything if you just watched him while he was here. I mean, he did a bunch of really cool stuff and then they killed him. <laughs> and that's your, that's your ace up your sleeve, Jesus? That's it? And that's why they were confused and freaked out and hiding because they didn't understand the Jesus they'd been following. Were they following Jesus? Yeah. Did they know him? No. Oh, I'd love to, I'd love to get into the thing. I don't know why the Holy Spirit keeps quickening this because we don't even have time to go here. I'm telling you. But I, he has shared recently, in fact, yesterday with me. how clearly the disciples continually perceived his words wrong based on a view that they had been trained doctrinally to believe. They couldn't help go there. That's where they thought it all led. And Jesus' very words were incredibly explicit as to what he was saying. And they get into a situation and they're totally in another world. They went with him, but they were not with him. They, they, they were in a foreign land compared to where he was at because they never let this mind be in them. See, not let this teaching, not let's let this mind be in you. Amen. Father, we just ask you to continue to feed us on Christ. Lord, the bread of life, Father, the only true bread from heaven, not miracles and not manna, 
with the true bread. And Lord, to put this poured out wine into us and this broken bread into us and to commune, to commune with you in it. Lord, open our hearts that we may see Jesus. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may see Jesus. Draw us, Lord, and we will run. We love you so much, Jesus. We love you so much. So, Father, we just ask it in Jesus' name. We're dismissed.